stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Somebody say dry ground. Raise your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Raise your hand over the sea and divide the water. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water. I want to put a tag on this text and teach for a few minutes this last message of 2023, this rhema word for somebody. I want to teach from this topic, the green light at the Red Sea. The green light at the Red Sea. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. The green light at the Red Sea. Family, there is a popular, powerful phrase that many of us are familiar with and maybe even often repeat. A phrase that is short yet succinct and strong. This phrase is timing is everything. I believe that, that no truer words have been said. Indeed, timing is everything. The simple yet, watch this, so this simple yet substantive statement summarizes the sentiments of a sage named Solomon when he scribbled it in scripture when he said to everything, Ephesians 3, there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Y'all stay with me, we'll get somewhere. Th this truth is furthered by the reality that many of us uh, know what it feels like maybe to be behind time. Mm -hmm. M meaning we know what it feels like to feel like time is moving and we're not. Some of us know what it feels like to want to fast forward through certain seasons of our life, but it feels like God has us paused. Others of us may uh, desire to skip ahead when it is uh, we feel like God literally has us in a state of rewind. We all maybe can identify uh, with the truth that timing is everything. Not, not that time is, uh, time in and of itself is everything. Timing, stay with me, is everything. There is a slight nuance between time and timing. Lord, this is good already. Uh, watch this. Time is the tick-tock of the clock. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the minutes. It's the hours. It's the seconds. It's the days. It's the weeks. It's the years. It's the calendar. It, it, it's the decades. It, it, time is important. Time is imperative. Uh, uh, minutes from now, we're going to celebrate uh, walking into 2024. That's cool. Um, uh, time refers to the change of the clock. Stay with me. Timing refers to the choice of the creation. Time is change. Timing is choice. I'm going somewhere. Oh, this is so good. Timing, by definition, is the choice or the judgment or the control of when something should be done. Lord, this is good. Time is the what, timing is the when. Time deals with seconds, timing deals with sensing. Time deals with decades, and timing deals with discernment. Time deals with years, and timing deals with yielding. Time is counted by minutes, timing is decided by moments. Timing is everything. This is important, let me tell you why this is important, because, watch this, because we serve a God who stands outside of time, and he even supersedes time. Can I get an amen right there? He is not limited by the constraints of a calendar. Uh, he, the, the, the Savior is not stunted by seconds. He, he is not rushed because he stands on the outside of what time literally is. He is not rushed because he will never be rushed by something he's not limited by. This is good news for some of us. Watch this. Uh, as I lay this foundation, this is good news for some of us because regardless of what it is that you have to encounter in 2022 or uh, 2023, I believe that God is orchestrating a sovereign situation to make up for the time that you thought you lost. The Bible says it like this. He will redeem the time. Lord, this is going to 
when, he, when the Bible says he will redeem the time, that's not saying that he will give you more time. That's saying that he will do more in the time that you have left. Lord, have mercy. This is good to me. And the reason that you're still sane in the membrane is because God is getting ready to redeem the time that you have. And, and, and I don't have to wait until the tick-tock of a clock of a new year in order to celebrate what God is getting ready to do for me in 2024. Now, your neighbor needs to see it before they celebrate it. But I'm of the persuasion that if God can pay for my sin in advance, I can celebrate my breakthrough in advance. I wish I had about 15 people that will believe that God can do it before he does it. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Is there anybody that can say, God, I believe that it's getting ready not just to be my time, but God, you're getting ready to do something that eyes have not seen mm -hmm. and that ears have not heard. Touch somebody and say, God's getting ready to do it. He's getting ready. I just preached the text. <laughs> I just preached the doggone text. I just preached the text. I preached the text because in Exodus 14, we see a group of people who feel like they might just be running out of time. And as bad as I want to jump into Exodus 14, um, I, I can't because I got to give you context uh, so that you can respect the content. There's no, I can't just jump into Exodus 14. It's like walking into a movie and you just come in like 15 minutes late and you don't even know why she getting ready to slap Harpo, right? You don't even know, know why Tina was going off on Ike. You don't even know. You just walked in. So I can't give you Exodus 14 without giving you some context. Uh, uh, and I'll be quick with the context, I think, but there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's something that's here. So Moses is this individual who never quite felt accepted. Moses, Moses, you might not know this, but Moses as a baby had to deal with abandonment. Right? So there was a decree out, kill all of the boys. Uh, uh, so Moses, they put him in the basket, sent him down the river. Some of y'all know this. And uh, Pharaoh's daughter catches, gets, gets him. She raises him as an Egyptian. It's time to nurse him. And then she calls Moses' mother. Moses' mother comes and nurses him. <laughs> then she gives him back. So now the person that Moses loved the most has given him away twice. What does it feel like to have love and then lose love and then have it again and then lose it again? Y'all like, man, I'm. So now this is Moses. <laughs> this is Moses. Moses is this individual. He then grows up never quite fitting in. This is just context because he's too Hebrew to be Egyptian, but yet he's too Egyptian to be Hebrew. He don't know who he is. Moses, M Moses, Moses then grows up. I'm fast forward. Moses then sees an Egyptian fighting with the Hebrew. He jumps in, kills the Egyptian. Right. M Moses kills the Egyptian, but then um, the next day he sees the Hebrew that he defended, and they said, what you think, you're going to be king over us? And Moses is tripping like, I did this for you. So here it is. We got this ex-murderer named Moses. Come over here, because this side ain't going to keep it real with me. This, this ex-murderer who murdered somebody and hid him. Got to be careful, because sometimes you think just because you hide it that it's healed. It's not. We got an ex-murderer. Some of us say, well, I don't feel it anymore. Just because it's numb, that doesn't mean it's healed. I ain't even tripping no more. When I see him, I don't even care. But are you healed, though? I know you're numb. God, I'm preaching. I know you're numb, but are you healed? So Moses, this ex-murderer, and before you turn your nose up at Moses, Fresh Church, you know I love this. Everybody in here is an ex-something. Y'all ain't seeing. That's right. Is my microphone working? Is it? Let me see. Everybody in here is an ex-something. Everybody on this side, I, I'm looking at, listen, y'all. <laughs> Everybody in here is an ex-something. But watch this. God did not allow what he used to be to stop him from what he could become. 
God does not disqualify us because of our past. As a matter of fact, there's a shout in what I just told you. Oh, my God. There's a shout in what I just told you. I just told you that Moses was an ex something. And y'all just raised your hand that everybody in here is an ex something. You ain't got to tell your neighbor what you were ex. It's none of their business. But my shout is that God didn't allow the ex me to ex me. Man, I'm. I said God didn't allow the ex me to ex me. In other words, you don't need to know what I've been through. You don't need to know what I've come through. You don't need to know what I struggle with. But just all you need to know is that God used all of that to make me to what it is that you see in me today. The text is interesting because Moses says he can't speak well. I'm just giving you context real quick that, that, that Moses can't speak well. He's talking to God, t- trying to, God is talking to Moses about delivering a people. Moses starts to talk to God and tell God that he can't do what God is calling him to do. Moses says, I'm slow of speech. But he's talking to God and he's using his speech. He <laughs> says, I'm not eloquent with words, but he's talking to God about how he's not eloquent with words. Moses is trying to talk God out of calling him into what God is trying to talk him into doing. Just a little context. Because I need, I need you to understand who Moses is before we get to where we're going. This, this is important. This is important. Moses, this ex-murderer, can't speak well, allegedly. Um, and here's what God does. God, God says, cool, you can't speak well. I'm getting ready to do you a favor. I'm getting ready to send you Aaron. Aaron Aaron comes, and Aaron is, is well-spoken. So God sent Moses help for what he thought was his weakness. Lord have mercy. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Watch what happens. M- Moses, God says, Mo- this is Exodus 4. God says Moses help. As a matter of fact, it says this, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, what about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. As a matter of fact, watch what he says. He says, as a matter of fact, he already on the way, and he will be glad to see you. Lord, this is my shot right here. He says, I already calculated what you think you can't do, and I've already sent assistance, Lord, because godly assignments are always accompanied by godly assistance. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why I don't have to bet. Oh, my God. There's no more begging you. Will you please come to my grand opening? No more asking you three or four times, asking my family, are you going to support my idea? Are you going to log on to the live stream? I'm not allowing people's familiarity to block who it is that God is calling me to be. Look at somebody and say, God is getting ready to send me help. This this is interesting. This is interesting because God is sending God is sending help. God, God, is, God, is, God is sending help. He, he's sending help to Moses. And now, now I'm going somewhere. And now they, are, they find themselves at a point where Moses has to go and talk to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Pharaoh lets the people go. And, um, and the Bible says, Exodus 13, 17, the Bible says that God did not send them, watch this, uh, straight into uh, the land of Canaan. He sent them, as a matter of fact, let me read it for you. It says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that way was shorter. You see how much God is, God is not concerned with time. He says, that way was shorter. Because he said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return. I, God says, I'm not, going, I'm not going to send you straight there because if I send you straight there, you're going to encounter something that you're not ready for. See, you've been praying for the front side of the blessing, but everything that God sends you has two sides. There's the front side and then there's the back side. You get the promotion, but with the promotion, you get more pressure. So now, I'm just giving you content. I'll get to the text. So now, watch what happens. Watch what happens. He says, I'm not going to send you the shorter route. 
Because if I send you the shorter route, you're going to face war that you're not ready to face yet. And then here's what you're going to do. You're going to decide to go back to bondage. Because bondage always looks better when you're gone. (laughs) Bondage looks beautiful when you're no longer there. We weren't really that bad. We didn't go through that much. Yes, you did. You was crying every single night. You didn't know whether they were coming home. They didn't answer your text. You was worried about. It's quiet. But because he took you, he's taking you. Oh, God, I'll come get you. Because he's taking you the long route, you start considering bondage again. Because it's taking too long. (laughs) I said again, because it's taking too long, I'm going to just go back to what I know. I might as well deal with what I know. It ain't that bad. I know they crazy. It's quiet, but that's okay. I'll preach anyway. We're going to preach right on into 2027 or something. (laughs) Don't matter to me. How y'all doing? Welcome to the Fresh Church. He says, "I'm I'm not sending you the short route. Because it's not so much about the distance to destiny. It's about what's happened inwardly. And you want a shortcut. But when you take a shortcut, you end up cut short somewhere. So here's what happens. When God, when God, when God, Lord, this is so good to me. I don't even know when to start or stop. When God sends you the long route, it's not punishment. When God sends you the long route, it's preparation. He's getting you ready for something. So this is for 15 people on the back row. If you feel like God is taking longer than you thought he could or even should, I got a word from you from on high that God says your waiting season, Lord have mercy, your waiting season is not punishment, it's preparation. God says I can see further than you, so I'm stopping you from getting into something that could potentially harm you. Get to the text. And you see how God is more concerned with timing the choice. Um, because if they would have fought the Philistines, then they would have died in war. You, you got to thank God that some stuff he withheld for you, from you. See, we, we, we complain about what we don't have. But we need to start thanking God that we don't have it yet. Oh, gosh. Exodus 4, that was, text, that was context. Exodus 14. Watch this. And y'all going to run out of the church. When, verse number five, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh had his officials Uh, And his officials, they changed their mind about them. And this is what they said. Watch this. What have we done? We have lost the Israelites and their services. When they finally got enough strength to walk away. They came to their senses, the the, the Egyptians, and said, wait, hold on. We didn't just lose them. We lost their services. See, some people are trying to keep you in their life, not just because they want you. But they didn't understand that you might win some, but you just lost. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You lost my, you didn't just lose me. You lost my services. It's quiet. Some people.
people are chasing you down because it's not that they just want you. They lost your services. That's why your ex in your inbox. That's why they in the DMs. That's why they loving every picture on IG. You can put a picture of your toe. They, oh, God, I'm double. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my mama don't even like, you liking everything. They got something to say on every story you put up. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, I just woke up. What are you talking about? Some people don't know how easy you made their life. I got to come get you. You booking doctor's appointments for them, grocery shopping, making lunches, taking care of them when they sick, covering bills that they didn't have, give them a few dollars here and there, you need a few dollars. You, you, encouraging them. And they think, don't run out of here, they think that when they lost you, they can still keep your services. You thought that when you lost me, that you would still have access to me. Look at somebody and say, access denied. In this <laughs> the devil is a whole bald-headed lie. You will not have access to me in this season. You lost me and you lost my service. Because you need to know how much of a service I was to you. The Israelites, they were like, uh, uh, the Egyptians were like, wait, hold on. Well, who's going to take care of the, who's going to call the, who's going to build the, who's going to feed the? The Israelites were like, All right, listen, I don't even know. I'm just, that's it. Oh, Jesus, this is good. You have to understand that some people have to realize that when they lost you, they lost your services. So now I'm going to give you the script because you came to church today. You came and you needed a rhema word. You needed something. You wanted to hear from God. You wanted direction. Well, I don't know if I got that, but I do have something that I want you to give to the people that think that they, that, that they can uh, lose you and keep your services. I want them to get this the next time they called you. I wanted to say this is right here on the screen. Watch this. I'm sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service to you. This person has limited your access to them. Someone else may or may not be benefiting from the services you took advantage of. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try again or don't. Y'all ain't saying nothing to him. Somebody else may or may not be benefiting from what you've been taking advantage of. So in this season, I'm getting ready to praise God that I came to my senses. That I real y'all ain't saying nothing in here. That I realize my true value. I realize what I bring to the table. I dare you to stand up and sit back down and say, access denied. I'm sorry, the person in the number that you called has been disconnected. What's going to mess them up is you're going to answer and say it. <laughs> there we go. Hello, I'm sorry, the person that you call has been, uh, yeah, this number has been disconnected. It's no longer in service to you. Yeah. Uh, you got limited access. And somebody else may or may not be benefiting from what you took advantage of. Um, so if you feel that you reached this recording in error, please check the number and call back again. Or don't. Do the latter. <laughs> because when you lost me, you lost my services. And some, po some people, they need to know what you covered them from. Some people need to know that it was your prayers that kept them from that thing. 
See, this is for 15, this is for 15 people that, can, that, that has people around them that's upset with the fact that they're always trying to go to church and trying to do this Christ thing. And you're not perfect, but you got your own issues. But they don't understand that it's only because I'm trying to do this thing right that I didn't slap you yet. Like, for real, for real. <laughs> like, you need to understand that I need to go to church. I need it. I, it ain't even for you. It, it, I need it because if I don't get a word for my life, I don't know what I would do. I don't know how you... <laughs> oh, let me get to the text. The text, the text, the text says uh, that he lost their services. And here it is. They head out. I'm just giving you the overview. Y'all come back next week for a whole theological study on this. All, but but watch this. They head out, and um, they found themselves at the Red Sea. All right, Exodus 14:10. And 11 says this, as Pharaoh approached them, the Israelites looked up and they were, uh, and, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? And what you done did to us, man? What, what have you done to us by bringing us to Egypt? D didn't we say to you in Egypt... Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. Now they want to run back because times got hard. Be careful. Oh, my. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in this desert. Listen to their language. They were terrified. It would have been better if we went back. Um, they were afraid. They cried out. Leave us alone. I want to go back to the Egyptians. Be careful what you're saying. Because what you're saying, you're sowing. And what you're speaking, you're reaping. What you're saying, you're sowing. And what you're speaking, you're reaping. So, so it's important that we got to speak what we want to see. I got to get somewhere. I want, I, want to get, I want to get somewhere. It's important that we speak what we want to see. The Israelites were saying, um... We're going to die here. There were no graves there. Listen to the language. The, everything that they were saying was, tip, was basically negative speech. That's what they were speaking over their lives. And if we're not careful, we will, try, we will label the next season of our lives because of what the last season of our lives looked like. So we will label 2024 based on the contents of 2023. You've got to speak what you want to see until it matches what you said. For about five seconds, I want to speak some things over your life. And if it's you, I want you to say, I received that. I want to speak a year of increase, a year of more, a year of good health. A year of good relationships. This is my marriage year. Mm. This is my holy year. This is my prayer filled year. This is my miracle year. This is my faith year. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This is my fitness year. This is my ministry year. Touch two people and say, this is your time. If I'm going to speak something. I just want to speak what he said. Um, okay, the text says Exodus 14 and 12. I'm out of here. Exodus 14 and 12 say, didn't we say to you, leave us alone, let us go to serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to, to live in, 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 in Egypt. I want to look at Moses' leadership. Moses, watch this, what happens? They are here at the Red Sea. Moses answered the people. He said this. He said, don't be afraid. Stand firm. Check Moses out. Moses is on his leadership stuff. Watch what he says. He said, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. The Lord will fight for you. I say, look at Moses. Moses talking big. Moses say, the Lord, all right, okay, but, but then... He turns around, and he said, now, Lord, what in the world are we going to do 
because I got a Red Sea in front of me and I got Pharaoh behind me. I got my past behind me and I got obscurity in front of me. I don't know what's there. I know what's there. I'm looking at Moses' leadership and then I see Moses' lament. He's crying out to God after he just stood in front of people and declared what God is going to do. This mo- mo- stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians you see, well, you'll no longer see them again. And he say, God, you ever had to do two things? You ever had to be strong for your babies? But then turn around at night and say, God, I don't know how we're going to do this. You ever had to be the strong friend? But then go home and be like, Shh. You ever had to be strong for everybody else? And then you get to a place and you feel like you're running on E? You ever, I'll come, you, you, ever, you ever had to be a man that you've never seen in your life? You ever had to be a husband that you've never seen? A father that you wish you had? You ever had to be a mother that you never got the chance to experience? So while you enjoy being that for your child, there's something deep down on the inside of you that's saying, man, I wish I had that. How much could I have overlooked if I would have had somebody to tell me what I'm telling them? And you think, and people think that because I'm a grown man that I don't have little boy issues. They think because I'm a grown woman and I got two jobs and I'm I-N-D-E-P-E-D. <laughs> you know what that mean? <laughs> that I don't have little girl issues and little girl traumas. And when I come out the house, stand firm. Yeah. But deep down inside, that little girl crying. Because daddy never came back. Because they put their hands on me and they shouldn't have. I was innocent. I didn't deserve that. What do you do when you're the man of the house, but you need a man? What do you do? What do you do when you medicate your boyhood trauma with other women? What do you do when you when you stand in firm but broke down? And you look good. And you got money, and you got a house, but the one thing you really want, you don't have. What do you do when you're living in this dualism to where I got to be strong, but then I know I'm weak? And Moses is like, I got a Red Sea, then I got Pharaoh. And I got a Red Sea, I got Pharaoh. Okay. I got these people depending on me. I'm supposed to lead them out. Yeah. I didn't ask for this. You called me to this. I was good. I wasn't in bondage. So what he was doing, he wasn't even doing for him. Some of us know what it feels like. You're not working all those hours for you. You're good. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then Moses, verse number 21, stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove back the sea with the strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and the wall of water on their left. This messed me up because in my mind, all I ever heard was that when Moses raised his hand, then the water started this Hollywood scene and then the water started going from side to side and they just walked in. But that's not what the text says. The text says that all that night the wind was blowing. So some of us, we're waiting on an immediate miracle and God says I'm going to give you an incremental one. The Red Sea parting 
was not instant. The text says, all that night, the wind was blowing. So I shout on the fact that the, the sea might not be parted yet, but I'm grateful that the wind is blowing. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here when I tell you this. I think, watch this. Exodus 14 and 19 says this. Then the angel of God who, can I read the Bible in church, y'all? Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of the Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them. What? what? I'm tripping because I got the Red Sea in front of me. Then I got Pharaoh behind me. And then the angel that was in front of me moved behind me. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of protection. In other words, I, you don't have all the details on what it's going to take for you to get to where you are to where God is calling you. But one thing you can rest in is that God is protecting you. <laughs> Moses, the Israelites, Red Sea in front of them. Pharaoh behind them. swim like that who out here know how to swim Any, nobody they didn't teach y'all that in Egyptian school they didn't, they didn't teach you how to swim I'm not talking about a red sea I'm talking about 2024 you know what 2024 looks like right now there's nothing there The question is, what do you see when you see nothing? When you look at next year, what do you see? Do you see a space where God can do a miracle? Or do you see what was in 2023? And what if I told you that God is giving you a green light at the Red Sea. In other words, a green light, God's green light is godly assistance, anointing. And what we have to realize, you can put that back up there. Keep that up there for me, please. And what we have to realize is that oftentimes there are seasons of our lives and it look like this. And this is not the church where you throw a dollar in holler, stand up and sit back down, and turn around three times, and everything is going to be all right. It won't. You know when it will be all right? When we allow Jesus to make it all right. When we partner with him. When God has, God has given us a whole nother year. Now, God, I'm going to need you to do some miracles in this year. And the miracle that I need you to do is not the Red Sea in front of me. It's the Red Sea in me. It's the areas in me that I feel like I can't get through it. I don't know what to do with it. I can't get around it. It's the areas on the inside of me that are so broken that God, I don't want to take it into this next year. I do not want to take this hurt into the next year. I want to drop it off in 2023, cast my cares on you, and move forward. I don't want the, the, the ravages of a Red Sea season to be the definition of who I am. I want to speak to the people like me.
people like me that can say, I know what it feels like to know I know what it feels like to know that I don't know what's next but I do know that God if you go with me I can get through whatever it is I don't know what 2024 is going to look like but I do know one thing if you go with me It'll be exactly what you said it should be. If you will stand to your feet. The green light. At the Red Sea. It is. It is an opportunity for every one of us to embrace watch this it's an opportunity for every one of us to embrace the idea that we don't have all the answers but also embrace the one who does so I want to ask you do you want to give God your year now that God, I don't even know what this this C this year gonna look like, but I know you're giving me the green light to make it what you called it to be. So that means some of us we're gonna have to go and do. We're gonna, there's some things we gotta work through internally. 